Thank you very much, and thank you, Helen, for your leading of this service. Jesus said, blessed are you, and he also said, woe to you, you'll recognize those two different phrases from our gospel reading from St. Luke, which you might like to keep before you. Um, as often happens, as I come to think about what to say, I look back over the week and think, is there something that's been in the news that we might all have touched that might be worth reflecting on? And there was one event that came to mind. You may have seen it. John MacDonald, the Shadow Chancellor, being involved in a, an event run by an organization called Politico, and at the end, clearly, the person who had been interviewing him asked him some of those quick-fire questions. One of them was, who's your favorite conservative? John MacDonald, as you know, is fairly left-wing, said, next question to that. But the one that got into the news was the one about Churchill. Uh, you know, just before I go on to that, you know those uh, sort of quick-fire things, don't you? Often they appear in the paper as well. Are you Man United or Man City? Are you... So often, the desire to divide black and white. Blessed are you, said Jesus. Woe to you, said Jesus. In our Gospel reading, we have St. Luke's version of what in Matthew is called the Sermon on the Mount, except in Luke, as you probably know, it's the Sermon on the Plain. There are similarities and there are differences. And one of the really significant differences is that whereas in Matthew's gospel we have that list, what is it, eight or nine, blessed are, in Luke we have both blessings and curses, it, blessings and woes. It reflects in many ways the uh, typology of, say, the book of Deuteronomy, which speaks of both the blessings that come from the law and the curses that come from the law. And at first sight, Matthew's sermon on the plain looks as though it's encouraging us to be black and white, to be binary in our divisions. And at one level, of course, there is a binary divide. At the heart of it, there is that fundamental choice. Which path are you following? Are you following the path of life? Or the path of death? Are you following the path of blessing? Or are you passing, following the path of judgment? And I'm not playing that down. Because at the, at, when it comes down to it, in the end, there is the way of God. And there's the way of the world. There's the way that celebrates all that the world seems to esteem. Self-riches, celebrity, pleasure. That focus on self and typifies so much of how some believe we should live. And there's that other way that reflects the values of the cross, of sacrifice and obedience and self-giving, of generosity and all the gifts of the Spirit. Do you turn to Christ or do you turn to sin? But that's, I suggest, not the whole story Jesus said, blessed are you. Jesus said, woe to you. In our gospel, Jesus is preaching to his disciples. There's a large crowd there. We're told that all those with uh, sickness and um, issues of ill spirits and whatever had come to him, and he had healed them. But then it says, then he looked up at his disciples and said, and as far as I can see, his words of blessing and his words of woe are directed both to the disciples. It doesn't do, he starts with the blessings and then goes on to some other crowd. Tom Wright, 
says Jesus was, in effect, giving a team talk. He had called his disciples. We're fairly early on, actually, just before this. Um, I think in Luke, we're reminded who the disciples are. And he's beginning to introduce them to the values of the kingdom. But he speaks both blessings and woes to them. He recognizes, I suggest, that it, they need to hear both. The disciples, who both knew something of what it was to be blessed, to know their need of God, but the disciples also, who needed to be challenged and to hear that challenge. Disciples who wanted to wait, walk the way of the cross, we know that, but also before too long, at least two of them will be asking whether they could have seats of precedence in heaven. They wanted a Messiah, but not that sort of Messiah. They needed to hear both the blessings, and the woes. It wasn't quite as black and white as some might suggest. So what's Jesus saying? Well, Jesus is saying, of course, this is the way, but hear the blessings and hear the woes. It's what he said to the, wo the, the woman who caught in adultery in John's Gospel, wasn't it? He was, it was a loving response, but it was also go and sin no more. Here's the blessing, here's the woe. It's the blessing that God loves us, whoever we are, but it's also the woe that we need to them to change our lives. Blessed are you, woe to you. So what's God maybe saying to us this morning? Well, I think, first of all, I think we just need to look at that temptation. Because I think it's in all of us at times to split people into either goodies and baddies. This or that. It, the worst of it comes, say, think of the world of work. And sometimes there are those who do appraisals at work, which basically either you're doing well or you're doing badly. But actually the really good appraisals, I think if any of you had appraisals at work or development conversations, are those that begin by affirming the blessings, but also then speak of the challenges that you need to address. It's when I do um, conversations with clergy as part of their ministry development review. You start with the blessings. And not least because then people usually are more honest about the areas where they're struggling. It's the same in pastoral care. There may well be all sorts of things that need to be dealt with. But you begin by the blessings that God is doing in someone's life, where the strengths are. For only then can you talk about the woes. And it's rarely all good or all bad. It's the same in terms of church growth. If you start talking about church growth in terms of just anxiety and woe, it's unlikely you will grow. Begin with the blessings that all sorts of things can happen. There are woes in the life of this church. But the word of God at the moment is not just woe, it is blessing. And as we talked about that uh, uh, profile, how will it speak of the blessings of this place? But also, give an honest picture that there are things that could be better. The danger is, even in profiles, that either we say it's all good or it's all bad, but we know that in reality it's more nuanced. There are always blessings and woes that hang together. And maybe that's God saying something about you and me. I don't know, we have different personalities, some of us, but the danger is, always, is also that sometimes we say ourselves in black and white terms particularly as Christians, we're either saved or not. In reality, we are in Christ, but we are always growing more into Christ. We are saved, and yet we are sinners who need God's blessing and God's mercy. And I would suggest in the history of the church, where people have emphasized either one or the other, we have missed the depth of what it is to be loved by God, both blessed, but also reminded of the woes. Indeed, 
too much black and whiteness, too much goody and baddie language in the way that we think about ourselves or about others in the church leads to a spiritual arrogance that is judgmental. Are we those who know our hunger for God and who know the cost of discipleship with all its blessings and all its challenge? Or are we those who are spiritually self-satisfied and who lose our sense of dependence and humility before God? Of course, as I've said, the sum of both in each of us, which is why we're here, rejoicing and praising God for all his goodness and seeking his grace. And then maybe that finally says something about how we see the world. All too often, the temptation is to be black and white again, to be, that is good, that is bad. And some things are clearly where we need to recognize that they're wrong and to challenge them and to speak out of them. But even in our world, quite often we ought to pause and think, for there are blessings and woes. Just take something. Luke's gospel is the gospel that is primarily the one that speaks not just about spiritual poverty and need, but also speaks to those who are poor and in need. You, one of the other differences between the two sets, the, gospel, the Sermon on the Mount and the Sermon on the Plain, Matthew talks about those who are poor in spirit. Luke talks about those who are poor. Luke is concerned about to speak of a kingdom that is radical in its concern for those in need. It's why Luke also has the Magnificat, that song of revolution that Mary sings. It's why Luke is the one who has Jesus opening the scriptures in the temple, Isaiah 61, and talking of the, the, of the age, of, of, of the day of the Lord, of, the, of the God's kingdom as one that removes, of, of, which is of justice and the removal of oppression. And so, an example, one of the things that's of concern in our society, as we know at the moment, is universal credit. Quite possibly some of you are caught up in it. All too often, the question that is asked is, is it good or is it bad? But actually, in reality, I would suggest, it's a bit of both. I personally think the principles behind universal credit of simplifying the, the benefit system, of bringing things together, of trying to make it one stop rather than several stops, nothing wrong with that. But equally, the way that it has been put into practice that leaves people without money for weeks, that, that pushes people back onto food banks because there's literally nothing to buy food with, then that is clearly not right. Blessings and woe go together. Blessed are you, says Jesus, woe to you. Jesus held those two things together. In his preaching to the disciples, somehow he was saying, blessings and woe, are, to, are, are hang together. It's not just black and white. It's not binary. It's not this or the other. And I'm just suggesting that in our that we need in all sorts of aspects, in the way that we see other people, in the way that we judge ourselves, in the way that we judge the world, be cautious of either just saying it's a matter of blessing or it's a matter of woe. How do they hang together? And of course, if you go back to Churchill, he was a hero. The greatest leader this country's had. But actually, he was a bit of a villain as well. Not, really, not just because of Tony Pandy. He got other things wrong. There are aspects of his life, like all of us, that were not what they might have been. But that's who we are before God. And that's what St. Luke reminds us of in our gospel today. Amen.